Good morning, church. Um, how are your stress levels doing this morning? Last week we spoke, and we spoke about having a bread knife, and um, we spoke about bread knife as being the, the sharp edge of um, differing points, words that speak, people speak, and different opinions that people have, cutting into us, people saying things that are hurt us, and we hurt other people, and it's, and it's sometimes like a knife cutting into it. And this is the kind of thing that happens um, when we are in stress mode. I was speaking to a neighbor during the, the week, and um, they're getting their business back and up and running again. And um, they were just saying how edgy people are, how, how they are quick um, just with the mouth. And the Afrikaans saying, Go op die perkie. And um, how stress levels out there are so high. And um, you know, this is a, um, a bread knife. But I want to introduce you to a, um, another um, kind of dangerous weapon that we uh, use in our world. I'm sure most of us or some of us have landed in this kind of situation where you've had difficult neighbors living next to you. It's their tree that grows and all the branches come over onto your side. And you know what? It's their tree's leaves that you know get shed and come into your pool. And yet it's not your tree. It's their tree. It's the roots of their tree that go into the sewerage system of your home. And you know what? The next minute you've got to unblock a sewerage. It's those kind of neighbors that you live um, next to who enjoy their weekends and for them it's that party and turning up the music until what hours of the night. And you know what? Then they've got children. Those children run around and they kick their balls. And the next minute it's a rugby ball, it's a soccer ball, it's a cricket ball. comes flying over into your yard. And, and, and that rugby ball lands up right there in your beautiful garden, hitting flowers. And, and you know what? You get kind of tired of those things. And then, and this is where this dangerous weapon comes into being. And it's a saying that we have. Have you heard of it? You say, I've got an axe to grind. I have got an axe to grind. Now, can you see this axe? Compared to this little knife. This axe to grind is, you know, it means to have a grievance, an un, uh, unresolved disagreement with somebody, especially when one feels the need for restri retribution. In other words, that neighbor, well, you know what, you land up, you know, taking all your dogs, um, turd that's lying on the ground, and you take it and you throw it over onto their lawn. Um, when the rugby ball comes over, um, you take the rugby ball and you don't give it back again. You just let it disappear. In actual fact, you just knife it. you the one that, you know, phone the police and say, hmm, this neighbors. And, and you want to take an axe to grind with them and you, you take a little bit further and um, you know what? Um, they kept me awake. I'm going to wake them up 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and you just ring, 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 goof, and then you put the phone down. You've got an axe to grind with them. And every time you see them, every time you've got, then you've got an issue with them. You've got an axe to grind with them. And, and this saying originates the sharpening of an axe on a grinding wheel to get this point sharp with this intent of using it for revenge 
Now you know, I know um, everybody somewhere along the line has had, had an axe to grind with somebody. Where somebody has hurt you, somebody's done something wrong. And you know what, you don't think, oh well, I, I don't want to kill them. But man, I sure would love them to be hurt or love them to be seen hurt. But I want you to imagine something else for a second. Imagine the axe is in God's hands. And God's got an axe to grind with you. Imagine that. You know, it's easy when, you know, things are going nice in life. God is good. Finances are flowing. There's no stresses and strains. There's just blessings coming my way. And then we say, well, I must be in God's good books. I am blessed. But many times bad things happen to good people. And you know what, when those bad things happen, start happening we start saying and asking questions like what have i done to deserve this why is god punishing me i've heard people speaking about this virus that is going around it and it's god punishing people he's hurting nations and it's affecting people and and it's god an axe to grind. Now folks, please, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time speaking about that topic, but I want, to, want you to know that whatever happens, there is a situation where I, you can land where God does have an axe to grind with you. The Bible is pretty clear on this. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3, Paul writes and he says, you were by nature object of God's wrath, God's anger. In other words, God is angry with you. You were by nature like that and he's got an axe to grind with you. Jesus speaking, in John chapter 3 verse 36, whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath, God's anger, God having an axe to grind with that person remains on him. In Romans chapter 5 verse 10, Paul, again, talks about people before they knew Jesus. And he says, you were God's enemies. In other words, hey, you're the enemy of God. Boy, I don't know about you. I don't want to be an enemy of God. I don't want to be somebody. God's got an axe to grind with me, an enemy. Who are these people? That the Bible talks about eternal separation from God. Eternal damnation. It talks about hell. Jesus spoke and he said, Whoever rejects the Son, whoever rejects Jesus as Savior and Lord, whoever does not turn from their wicked ways to follow Jesus, who continues in their unbelief, who does not have eternal life, who are not born again, who are not children of God. I want to say to you, the Bible says God's got an axe to grind with you. But you know what? There is an alternative. There is another kind of lifestyle. And it's not the kind of lifestyle of being uncertain. Is God judging me or not judging me? Has God maybe got an axe in me today and then tomorrow he's put away his axe? Does God treat us this way? No, there is another way to look at this in Ephesians chapter 2. I spoke to you about it last week. And I want to raise it again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 to 10. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him 
in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. That phrase, sat down at the right hand of God, seated in heavenly realms with Christ Jesus, means to be seated in the place of highest honor and favor with God. In other words, no longer an axe to grind. There is an alternative that we can have instead of walking around with judgment, worried about God's judgment in our lives. No, we can be seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. The other alternative means we share in Jesus' favor, in His honor, in His grace, unmerited favor, God's riches at Christ's expense, it, His kindness towards us. God doesn't walk around or, or think about us with an axe to grind against us. The Song of Solomon says it beautifully. He has taken me into His banqueting house. And you know what? His banner over me is love. Not, not judgment, not a banner of an axe. No, His banner over me is love. God loves me. And that's why the Apostle Paul could write in Romans chapter 8, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, angels, demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When I'm seated with Christ, when I put my faith and trust and confidence in Him, I'm clothed with God's love. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you living in a space where God's X to grind with you is like kind of a, a sword hanging over your head. Do you live in uncertainty? You know that little dandelion with the, I think it's the yellow little flowers? And you know what, when you're a teenager and a youngster, then you, you know, you fall in love for the first time and you, you think now, well, does this person love me back? And you go around there and you, you pick one little leaf, one of the petals and you say, he loves me. And the next one, He loves me not. And so you get round to the whole end of the dandelion and where the last petal is, that will, you know, prove the case of whether you loved or not loved. We can't live with that uncertainty in our lives. We need to know that we are seated with Christ. Today is Pentecost Day. Today we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to give us a certainty in our hearts that we are children of God, that we have God's favor, that we live in God's favor. The Apostle Paul wrote and he said, you know what, um, on Monday you can go and buy as much alcohol as you want to. But the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine which leads to immoralness, debauchery. And it's easy to say, well, I don't drink. That's got nothing to do with it. That's, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Because it says, be filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking to one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart. Don't wait until you get to church Man, it's time to wake up with a song in your heart and to worship God in your heart when you're driving in your car all alone to know that God is in control. Always giving thanks to the Father, being thankful in good times or bad times. 
virus or no virus, church or no church, finances or no finances, I am seated in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ at God's right hand, a place of favor. I am His child. His banner over me is love. The Holy Spirit wants to tell you this morning that you know what, you, you've got alternatives. You can live with an axe to grind. God got an axe to grind against you or else you can live with His banner over you, His love seated with Him in His favor. I want to pray for you today because you know what? Our little cages are getting rattled. Our, our stress levels are up. Uh, we're in a, a world that is very uncertain at the moment and, and we need to know, we need to know who we're seated with and why we are seated there. And I want to encourage you, just wherever you are sitting, watching this, it's time to put your faith and trust in Jesus and put your confidence in Him and to rest, to rest in Him and His favor. When you're a child of God, you have eternal life. In eternal life, God's no longer got an axe to grind with you. It's time maybe to commit your life to Christ. It's time to move out of uncertainty and to move into certainty of knowing who you are in Christ. Let's pray together. Father, I want to pray everyone that listened to your word. I want to pray that they will get to that place where it's not about God's got an axe to grind with me, but no, God's banner over me is love. Not because I'm a nice person, a good person, but because I put my faith and trust in Jesus, in His death, in His resurrection. Holy Spirit, you came on the day of Pentecost to make this real to us, make it real, this Pentecost again. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.